four o'clock rock. If you were thinking this is Hawaii, the state of clean energy, you were absolutely right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My co-host, Mina Marina, chair of the House Energy Committee for 13 years, and then uh, chair of the PUC for another Hmm, four or five? Four years. Four years. <laughs> and now Energy Dynamics. She's my co-host today. And our special guest is uh, Terry Searles. He's the um, uh, interim uh, director of the Hawaii State Energy Office in DBED. Uh, and finally, we have David Aquino, who's for Blue Planet Foundation. And he's going to talk us about, tell us about um, a deal he's made with Hawaii Energy. Okay, so welcome to you all. Thank you. Uh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> right, yeah, all right. I will let David go first because he's got a movie. If you guys had movies, we'd let you go first too. Okay, David, what do you got? <laughs> um, yeah. So thanks for having me, Jay. You know, as you know, Blue Planet Foundation, uh, our mi mission is to clear the path for 100% clean energy. Um, within that umbrella of clean energy, we feel that energy efficiency is the bridge to get there. Yeah. Um, so we re recently partnered with Hawaii Energy um, on a campaign called Small Kind Ridiculous. What is it? Um, small kind ridiculous. I thought you said small kind ridiculous. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Small kind ridiculous. And that's the name of your website, smallkindridiculous.org. Smallkindridiculous.org yeah, is, a, is a... You're the director of innovation. Story. You must have come up with that, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We definitely brainstormed and together we came up with this concept. And uh, what we're trying to do is get people to be smarter with their energy use. You know, it's obvious in, you know, our daily lives that waste is ridiculous when it comes to like wasting water or wasting money, you know. But we don't usually think the same thing about energy. And that's why we created the campaign Small Kind Ridiculous. And actually, we'll just roll the video right now, and you can see what's going on. Okay, let's see the video. Here we go. <laughs> It's obvious that waste is ridiculous. Why don't we think the same about wasting energy? Find out how you can be smarter with your energy at smallkindridiculous.org. <laughs> wow, well, that's really a funny movie. <laughs> David, what do you want to tell us about that movie right. now? So if you, you know, by watching that, you can see, you know, there's a lot of ridiculous actions going on, you know, just one swipe of the surf wax, just overpouring that syrup. <laughs> we had the anti wrapping the musubi with way too much saran wrap. So it's obvious that those actions are ridiculous and wasteful, right? But a lot of times we don't think the same way about energy. And at the end, you saw the couple leave the house, leave all the lights on. Um, so we really want people to just be smarter with their energy using and try to see it in a, a different light. Um, you know, and, then, and there's a little more to our mes message as well. Um, right now, we have a website, and it's called smallkindridiculous.org, <laughs> and we're encouraging people to visit the website, check out the video, you know, look at the energy tips, but then also make the pledge to be less ridiculous and smarter with your energy. So if you go to smallkindridiculous.org, take the pledge, you'll actually be entered to win a GoPro Hero session All right. uh, for pledging, and we'll be raffling All right. that off. All right, that's not so yeah. small kind ridiculous. That's yeah. valuable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's big kind smart. So you have to the end of the month. Actually, today is the last day to pledge and be entered into the raffle, so go ahead and submit, visit smallkindridiculous.org. Okay, and it's not the last time we're going to play that video, because I really <laughs> like that video. Can we play it again here of on Think Tank? All of right. Course. David Aquino, thank you so much for coming around. Valuable, thank funny, useful and it's going to change the way people think. Good for you. Thanks, you. Aloha. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back. We'll get to it with Peter Searles. Aloha. My name is Stephen Philip Katz. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, and I'm the host of Shrink Wrap Hawaii, where I talk to other shrinks. Did you ever want to get your head shrunk? Well, this is the best place to come to pick one. I've been doing this. We must have 60 shows with a whole bunch of shrinks that you can look at. I'm here on Tuesdays at 3 o'clock every other Tuesday. I hope you are too. Aloha.
What? It's not, Peter. Yeah, it's it's charity. charity. <laughs> How could you let me do that? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> so what does it mean to be the uh, interim uh, executive director, or rather, what is it, director of the Hawaii State Energy Office? What does it mean? Okay. So, so before I get into that, I want to give a commercial for David, because... Uh, to me, energy efficiency is critical for meeting our goals. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, if, if we just think only in terms of renewables while being either wasteful from a conservation standpoint, which is what that slide, or that little presentation was all about, we're not thinking about new ideas, new building envelopes, new energy efficiency appliances, or new technologies that allow us to do a better job with demand response. I, I mean, it, it will be tough getting to meeting the 100% goal. And I think if uh, it's easy, a lot easier to meet the 100% goal if we're driving down our, uh, in this terms, the electricity use. So I, I really appreciated that little video. It was a lot of fun and uh, it was spot on. So, well, let me ask you. Um, how much of the 100% goal is energy efficiency? Well, you know, if you think about the original, and this is when mm -hmm. Mina and I were around in 2008 when we mm -hmm. were wearing different hats, is that, uh, is that the original goal was by 2030, because that was the original set of goals for the, um, for the uh, Clean Energy Initiative, was 40% renewables and 30% energy efficiency. Or was it the other way around? You know, that's it, correct. That's correct, <laughs> yeah. And so basically, it was all along, it was going to be driven by us being much more energy efficient. Mm -hmm. And uh, people conserve better for energy when, for example, back in 2008, the, uh, because of very high oil prices, $150 a barrel then, that uh, people on the Big Island, for example, were paying close to 50 cents a kilowatt hour. So, you know, people started conserving. And so the idea is they, they need to continue to conserve, but in the meantime, the state needs to help more in terms of how do we bring new efficient technologies uh, to the marketplace and things like that. Yeah. So, so it's, a, it's a combination of things. It's conservation, which is a personal preference, but it's also how do you end up with these new systems that allow you to be more energy efficient? Yeah, right. the cheapest so, energy so, you know, is the energy you don't use. Well, right. yeah, the, the, exactly. The uh, Amory Levins uh, famously characterized these things, and a lot of people use it now, as megawatts. And uh, megawatts well, are the cheapest. I don't want to surprise you, but you know, this, uh, I didn't mention it, but this segment that we just had David Aquino on, mm -hmm. that's called the megawatt moment. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so, okay. yeah, see. Wow. So, you, you probably want me. Go ahead. Go ahead, Mia. So, so, you know, we have actually two portfolio standards. One is the renewable portfolio standards, which almost everybody knows about, but, you know, rarely talked about is the efficiency portfolio standard, where we're targeting electricity use reduction mm. targets by certain dates. But for, let's go back a little. Terry, how do you know all this stuff? <laughs> Tell us about, give us a little bit about your background. Well, you know, you could, you could ask him, what, what is it to be the director of the Hawaii State Energy Office? Yeah. I, I don't um, leave that to you, Mina. Okay. <laughs> well, which question do you want me to answer? Okay. Give us the um, short version of so, your background. So I, so I spent uh, probably, well, actually over a quarter of a century in two national laboratories. I was the... Uh, General Ma ultimately at Argonne National Lab, I was general manager for environmental programs that actually included a lot, all of the energy systems management work mm -hmm. that we did at Argonne for a variety of clients either, and, and they, we worked with uh, Department of Energy obviously, but also uh, Department of Defense and US EPA on those things. And then I was at uh, in the uh, at Lawrence Livermore as the associate lab director for energy, and again it was primarily working with um, energy systems analysis, new technologies, and the thrust of those technologies. A lot of times was all about energy efficiency, 
So we, we did that. And then I, I was on loan to the Energy Commission in California, where I worked for Art Rosenfeld, who's generally seen as the father of energy efficiency today in terms of the, uh, the national push towards this. And we, so we did, a, that's when we st I started doing a lot of work in renewables and efficiency. And then because I was president of Pictor and was helping to write one of the uh, first earmarks for Senator Inouye um, for, for um, energy that was, that was being paired with Senator Domenici from New Mexico, so both sides of the aisle. When, when that came through, Chauncey Ching asked me to come out and run that project. So I went to mm -hmm. HNEI um, for um, Y Natural Energy Institute for what I thought was going to be a year and ended up being over four years. And then I've been back and forth. And so I've known me in a very long time, going <laughs> back to the late 90s, working on various projects when I've been out here. Uh, either as a Pictor board member or president, and then with HNEI. You must know Jay, Jay Griffin pretty well. I hired him. <laughs> okay, well, I assume you... you, you <laughs> know Although I got a very good recommendation <laughs> from being <laughs> <Nina, so laughs> here at the table. Eh? Actually, I kind of remember that telephone interview. I was on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, first of all, the State Energy Office is located in, um, it's within the Department of Business, Economic Development, and Tourism. And as we mentioned earlier, Terry is the interim director. And so Jay's uh, earlier question, what does the State Energy Office do? <laughs> why, well, basically what we're moving on now is uh, that since I've shown up, and I, I go back to working over the years with Maurice Kai a lot, and... and uh, hey, Maurice. Yeah. The <laughs> great Maurice. Yeah. Yeah. Just and, a shout out, that's all. And then, <laughs> and then I, uh, and then, you know, working with Mark over the years, going back to his other positions in the uh, state government. So, you know, we're friends, and uh, so when Mark was leaving, he, uh, the, the short answer there, and I'll get into what we do, is to, um, was Mark asked me to see if I could take over, at least on an interim basis, for uh, what, as he moved on to HNEI. So the way I understand it, you're one of the few people not applying for that position. Right, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we did have a lot of applications, that's true. So, so I think Mark did a great job of bringing in a lot of new young people and, uh, you know, I'm really happy with the makeup of the, of the branch chiefs and, and uh, the people that are working there. I'm very happy with that. But, but what we're doing now, I've shifted gears a little from what went on over the recent past is that, and I was talking to Mina about this before the meeting, we've really withdrawn from filing into dockets. We, we're not going to be interveners except on str for strategic reasons. So, for example, it was, it was actually a very good idea to file into the next era docket because you really needed, you know, a lengthy perspective that, that's, that was filed into that docket and, and the... Uh, you mean the position, the, the position taken by yeah, the State Energy State Office. State Energy Office. But on the other hand, there's a lot of things that come up where, you know, the, for example, a rate case. And, and my feeling is rate cases are going to come and go. And I think that, uh, so then what do we do now if we're not doing that? And I think, first of all, we, we really need to be the state energy policy office. So we need to support the governor. Um, however, we need to be, you know, honest with the governor about what's working and what's not working towards the goals. And some of this is, again, what Mina and I have talked about is that when the clean energy emission initiative started in 2008, we were going to build these huge wind farms on Molokai and Lanai and run an undersea cable to Oahu. None of that happened. But in the meantime, we're meeting our renewable portfolio standard goals because wind turbine technology, the prices have come down. They've become more efficient. They're better able to deal with frequency and voltage uh, variations. And then, of course, we've had a huge drop in solar panel prices, including the installation has come down. So we're easily meeting the goals now. 
So part of what we're doing now is how do we rethink the future? Not the 2045 goal, but how do we rethink between now and 2030, going mm -hmm. back to the original Clean Energy Initiative goal? In, in other words, we're 10 years into the Clean Energy Initiative. We're almost 10 years. Why do you feel that we need to rethink it right now? What are the, what are the things that make it necessary well, for you to rethink it? Well, I think it's a, it's a variety of things. I mean, you know, you can't continually be relying on solar panels. I think you, you need to start considering, my, my thing is, how do you start better understanding how the grid's going to work and support more variable technology? And part of that has to come from all the new distributed technologies that are coming into place. I mean, the popular one is storage, but there's a variety of new technologies that go back. It could be cloud computing, it would be data accumulation, it could be methods for automated demand response, it, it could be uh, tele certainly telecommunications, and a lot of these things should be able to allow the utility to manage variability on their distribution systems because you have all of this, um, you have all of the, this uh, re Information. renewable energy, you know, on behind the meter, and so you have these two-way flows. How do you do a better job? Of well, it's very that? complex stuff. You're talking well, about it is. You, you know, <laughs> technology that are that are complex to start with. And then you put a cocktail of them together and you have to measure it outright and then you don't know exactly what the result would be when you start sure. putting all the ingredients in the cocktail. And so then, you turn, then you throw in all the economic factors. Because right. that's right. something, I mean, we have to be cognizant. So, and how do you sleep at night, Terry? Well, very well. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what kind of staff? You know, and I certainly agree that the energy office should be an energy policy office and it should address policy. But what kind of staff do you have that can appreciate all these technologies and the mixture of these technologies? You know, I, I think that, again, I go back to, I think Mark did a really good job hiring in some very good young people. Of course, I say that because you and I, and I'll not say this about Mina, but you and I are geezers. So, uh, and these people are... <laughs> Present <laughs> company. Yeah, right, right. And so these folks are, are young, they're enthusiastic, and they're knowledgeable about a lot of the technologies. There's a real good team there, and the idea is how do you take that forward? So you get back to the idea that uh, not only should we be the policy office where we can really weigh into these things and then be honest about where we might be going, but the other thing is I think we need to do a better job facilitating interaction. That's one reason I didn't want to be in the dockets. That uh, once you get into the dockets, any conversations you may have with the PUC are ex parte. And I, I, my aside from spending time in California is that uh, the previous uh, president of the California Public Utility Commission had the FBI raid his home. He got into a lot of trouble. Because of too many ex parte Ooh. discussions. So and extractions. It's difficult, right? <laughs> so, so the idea is if you're not in the docket, you can talk to anybody. And you should be facilitating interaction between David was just here from Blue Planet. The, the folks at the, in Hawaii, Kiko, the, um, the PUC, and others that interest the parties. And how do you move that dial along where, you're, where you start getting consensus on a number of things that you may not so, normally have? So, Jay, Wei, I think this is really important, having um, um, this body of sort of experts or knowledge within and especially in the energy office is that's a resource for the administration um, the governor's office that's a resource for the legislature and it's a resource for other departments in but moving <laughs> forward may I may I add the thought though that um, and we have <clears throat> we don't have enough time to identify all the potential organizations that could take leadership positions in the in the uh, you know the landscape of the energy community, in both in government and in private sector. 
I mean, just to list a few, the utility, they, they could take a leadership position. Yeah? They, uh, they should be leaders. They should be. They okay. should be uh, mm -hmm. PUC, they could take leadership positions, uh, such as what you did in, uh, in your inclinations paper, famous mm -hmm. inclinations paper a couple of years ago. Um, the uh, certainly the legislature, like it or not, the legislature is in a leader position, whether you like it or not, we can talk about that. Um, and it's governor himself, aside from the energy office, as a part of his administration. I could go on. Problem is, there are so many potential uh, companies and organizations and governmental agencies that could be, maybe each of them in their own way should be the leader. Who, where does, where does the, this goes back to my original question, right? Where does the energy office fit in this constellation of potential leaders? Well, you know, I think it goes back, there's a limit to what the PUC can do with policy because they have to regulate policy. And, and uh, you know, it's the same issue in California that there's some things going on where I had to take leave when I came out here. We were working on some automated demand response work for the, uh, for the California Public Utility Commission. Well, I was happy to get the money for that you know, as a retired annuitant for University of California, I was also um, felt that it should more appropriately be at the California Energy Commission because they should be the policy office, you know, their standard setting and so on, because the CPUC has to develop regulations. Do you think there so, should be an energy commission here in Hawaii uh, or possibly something along the lines of Robert Moses' uh, <laughs> concept of uh, an energy authority? Um, well, having, having served hamburgers to Robert Moses <laughs> when right? I was a kid <laughs> in one of my early jobs, oh, wow. my, my guess is uh, right that's probably, probably, <laughs> not, yeah, probably not a good idea. The, uh, I, don't, I, I think it's each state has to you know, go along its own path. I, I think actually having a commission with commissioners like California has which you know has maybe 15 times the population or 20 times the population as of the Hawaii's probably uh, overkill in terms of a state bureaucracy. I think that w where it resides now, which there's an acknowledgement that energy must fit into economic development, so it's part of DBED. I think that makes a lot of sense. I think that. Uh, you know the, uh, the the public utility commission has to develop has to develop regulations and pass on these dockets. They do need a technical staff, which you know I think Mina helped beef up when she was there and you know heading the commission. So I, I think all that comes into place. So there's <coughs> there's a dynamic here, mm -hmm. and and I you and there just as there's a dynamic in any other state. I think you don't want to invest in the bureaucracy. What you really want to invest in is in, in people and finding the right leadership in various organizations. And people have to understand that they need to work collaboratively. Um, so I think that's what's needed right now. It's the, it's the right leadership in these uh, different positions mm -hmm. that um, un understand the, the larger picture uh -huh. and how to get there. Well, this goes, I suppose, to a question that you raised before, and that is, so what's going to happen now? The interim means not forever. <laughs> I, I think it means not forever. What happens yeah. now? Well, we, we have an operation going on. I, my sense is, because that was one of the questions <laughs> that you know, I'm, I'm hoping that somewhere in July we'll have a permanent replacement. Mm -hmm. And we've had some good candidates. And, um, and so I think that uh, we'll get to the point. But, but again, I'm only, you know, I can't, I guess I'm divulging more than I should say. But, oh, that's but, okay. Yeah, it's, yeah, you won't tell anybody. It's just J and me right here. Right. <laughs> but, I, but I think that, you know, it's... The, I'm hoping that what we do, what, what I've done now over the time I've been there is to kind of recalibrate them to do, again, be, be the policy lead, be the facilitator, and also more broadly, and that's why I like David's presentation, again, help with education mm -hmm. about how do you use energy, how do you understand this better, how can we work with communities that may be impacted by utility scale development, 
So I mean, there's a number of things that can be done. So what I did do is um, when I got there, at, at, you know, after getting on, you know, kind of finding the desk and everything, is is I've been I've been working and we're in the final throes of laying out. Uh, this is what we're going to do, and and it's all about having a plan. You, you'd like to call it a strategic plan, but as it's as much a set of tactics as anything else. Mm -hmm. That that. I basically had the branch chiefs and, and the lead financial person develop. I mean, I, my view was, I'm going to be gone. What do you want this place to look like when I'm gone? So you're suggesting so, that it would be different under the new administration of this person selected, this unidentified person no, yeah. who will be selected by August. And it would be different, I guess, than it has been before. It will be a different office. Can you tell us any idea about how it will be different? Well, what, what would you like to, you know, send into the future as your legacy? Well, the, well, what I'm doing now is for the for the plan that we've talked about developing. The three key things about the plan I've just I've just pointed out is it's policy, facilitation, and education. And and you know, it's not just me saying here's what I think you guys should do. It's it's we we went away for. Um, a retreat, and the uh, the folks came up with here's here's what we think is important, and you know I mean I had some commentary, but this is what we think is important, and then all the meetings since then I've not been at because I said you've got. Nina, you wanted to cover more findings. before we close. Um, no, I I I think we were waiting with bated breath for announcement, and uh, we're lucky to have Terry as a resource. Um, within our community, and he always pops up when there's a need. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, I, and again, even though, but I must face it, I'm, I, I, as I joke, but it's true, when Mary Alice Evans asked me if I wanted it to be permanent, I said, number one, I'm in my 70s, so no. And number two, I don't want to get divorced because my <laughs> wife is still full-time at Stanford. But uh, that said, you know, I really believe I have good working relationships with people here and to the extent that I continue continue to help the state I'd like to be doing so that's but good of that's you going to be up to so folks. is is it closed now the is the period for uh, filing applications closed or yeah, somebody yes. watching this who might be interested it's too late for them I yeah think. it's too late uh, yeah. too bad for you all right. <laughs> But there are a lot of other positions that might be open. Yeah, okay, maybe some of those policy staff positions. Eh? Well, actually, we have, uh, I don't know what the closing date is, but we have two that are posted now. And because uh, we didn't get into the transportation, but uh, one of them is explicitly for a transportation specialist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, very important issue. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're in an interesting spot in, in the history of the Hawaii Energy Initiative. And yeah. uh, thank you for coming down, Terry. Well, this has yeah, been great, fun. Great to have you here. Maybe you'll come down later, too, again. Yeah. I'm always available. I, right. I didn't finish all my questions. Okay. <laughs> Maybe we should go in for a special session. <laughs> kind of like when the, you know, for the legislature. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, you close, Mina. Well, thank you, Terry. So this closes our, our month of what's happening at the legislature. Uh, focusing on watchers, people, the advocates who participate at the legislature, the doers. We had um, two legislators um, talking story with us, and, and now a, a vision from the implementer, people who have to carry out the policy and, and, and also educate. And so that closes out the legislative watch of uh, Hawaii State oh. of Clean Energy this month. Thank you, me and Marita. It's been great mm -hmm. to work with you this, this whole month. It's been <laughs> terrific. Thanks, Jay. Appreciate it. And thank you, Terry, for coming yeah, down. Good. It's great being uh, here. Good luck to you. Yeah. Whatever it is. <laughs> well, this year, the only problem I had is this job really cut into my skiing. Because when you get over 70, there's a lot of places in the Rockies and Sierra where they give you super geezer discounts. That, um, you got to hit 80 to be free, free at Mammoth. <laughs> right, right. And, and, and at North Star, but, but there's mm -hmm. some places where you hit 70 and you've gone through a senior discount and then you hit 70 and a super geezer discount. So like at Arapahoe Basin in, in Colorado, I was with my son a couple years ago and it was $95 for him and 20 for me.
Well, cheer up. It's $100 yeah. to get into Disneyland. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, both. Okay. Aloha. We'll see you next time. Thanks. <laughs>